Let's take a look at how to multiply fractions by whole numbers with tables. Complete the table, simplify each answer, and write it as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. And they're telling us our rule is to multiply by one half. So that means I'm gonna take each number in the in column and multiply by one half to see what I get in the out column. So when you're multiplying by one half, that's the same thing as taking half of a number, right? Of is a keyword to multiply. So when, the, when we have a fraction like half, it's nice to do our mental math here because we can take half of, especially these are all even numbers, right? Eight, 16, 24, and 28. So we can simply say, what is half of that number? Now notice that's what they did here. What is half of 24? Well, half of 24 is 24 divided by two or 12. So let's do the same thing. What is half of eight or eight divided by two? That gives me four. What is half of 16 or 16 divided by two? That would be eight. Half of 24, they already told us was 12. And half of 28 or 28 divided by two would give me 14. Now, one thing I want you to notice about this, in this case, when you say half, you already kind of think divided by two, but this is a rule that works even if it's a different number than one half. Multiplying by one over two and dividing by two are the same thing. And the reason is we have a rule that when we're dividing with fractions, we can multiply by the inverse. So multiplying by one over two is the same as dividing by two over one. And of course, two over one, we think as think of as just divide by two. So this would work if you have a fraction with one on the top, right? One half, we can divide by two. If you had one third, you could divide by three. One fourth, you could divide by four, and so on. If the top number is not one, it's gonna take a little bit more thought, and we're gonna see that in just a little bit. Complete the table, simplify each answer, and write it as a proper fraction or a whole or mixed number. This time they're giving us the same rule, multiply by one half. So we're gonna take half of an, our number, and of course when we're taking half of the number, that would be the same exact thing as saying that number divided by two. Okay, well half of four, or four divided by two, would be two. Half of eight, or eight divided by two, would be four. Half of 10, or 10 divided by two, would be five. And half of 14, or 14 divided by two, seven. Okay, this time they gave us a different rule. This time our rule is to multiply by three fourths. So this might be one where we wanna do a little bit of work to set it up. Now they gave us the first answer when we take eight and multiply it by three, four, three fourths, we get six, right? You take the in number, multiply it by our rule and you should get the out number. But let's see why that works. If we said eight times three over four, well, when you're multiplying a fraction by a fraction, it always helps to make the denominator one. Okay, so I can think of this as eight over one times three over four. And then you would multiply straight across. Well, eight times three would give me 24, and one times four would give me four. So I wind up with 24 over four, and 24 divided by four just gives me six, which is exactly what they put in the table. Now notice, when I put one in the bottom, dividing by one doesn't do anything, right? So another way to look at this, when you're multiplying by a fraction, three fourths, we're basically saying we're multiplying by three, right? Because our top number is getting three times bigger, but then the fraction line means division. So we're multiplying by three, and then we're dividing by four. So that's another 
mental math way you can think about this. Now it's up to you. You can say, I'm gonna take that whole number and multiply by three, then divide by four. Or you can simply write it out this way as a fraction. And I think writing it out this way might be just a little easier for some of these numbers. So let's see what happens. Let's do the same thing with 16. Okay, so 16 as a fraction would be 16 over one, right? That's the same as just 16. And my rule is multiply by three fourths. So I wanna multiply by three over four. Okay, well, 16 times three gives me 48. And one times four is four. And then I need to divide 48 divided by four and that gives me 12. Okay, so again, notice that the same rule worked the same way here. When I multiplied by 3 fourths, right, 16 times 3 was 48, so I multiplied by 3, and then I had to divide it by 4. So we could always just try this rule. Let's say, if I don't want to write it as a fraction, let's try doing it this way. We should get the same thing, right? Multiply by the top number, multiply by three, and then divide by the bottom number, divide by four. Okay, well, let's take 20. If I said 20 times three, well, two times three is six, and I would just put the zero on that, so 20 times three is 60. And then I would want to divide that by four. So 60 over 4 or divided by 4. Well, 60 divided by 4 is 15. And notice, these are two ways of doing the exact same thing. If you liked seeing the fraction multiplication, you can, of course, write it out this way. If you like thinking of it as two different steps, multiply by three and then divide by four, of course you can do it this way. You'll get the exact same answer either way. Okay, let's do it that same way one more time. If our in number is 28, well, we said multiplying by three fourths was the same thing as multiplying by three and then dividing by four. So we can say, okay, well, what is 28 times three? 28 times three gives me 84. And then I'm gonna take that number and divide it by four. Now you can write it either way. You can write it as a fraction or you can write it this way, 84 divided by four. And that gives me 21. Okay, complete the table. And again, our rule is multiply by three fourths. Okay, well notice zero times three fourths would give us zero. Well, that makes sense because zero times anything is always equal to zero. Now let's try eight. Okay, and again, you have two options. You can say, I'm gonna multiply the top number by three, or I'm gonna multiply that number by three, right? It's just a whole number. And then I'm gonna divide by four, or you can write it out the fraction way. So let's see, for eight, let's do it one more time, saying multiply by three and then divide by four. Well, eight times three, that would give me 24. And then I would still have to divide by four. So I would say 24 divided by four, and that gives me six. So if you're using this method, you always say times whatever number was in the numerator or top, and then what you get divided by whatever number is in the denominator or the bottom. Right, so we said eight times three, 24. And then we took that 24 divided by the bottom number to get six. And of course, if you write it out the fraction way, it's gonna be the exact same thing 
and it has the same meaning. You can kind of see how these are the same. So if I wanted to write it out as a fraction, I would say 12 is the same thing as 12 over 1, and I'm going to multiply that by 3 over 4. Okay, and when you multiply with fractions, you multiply straight across the top and you multiply straight across the bottom. So notice when I multiply across the top, 12 times 3 is 36. Isn't that the same thing as if I had said just multiply by 3? Exactly, it's exactly the same. And then on the bottom, well since my whole number is always over 1, 4 times 1 is always going to be the same as just 4, right? Multiplying by 1 is never going to change that bottom number. So that's the same thing as just saying divided by 4. So 36 divided by 4, or 36 over 4, right, two ways to say the same thing, gives us 9. Okay, so again, either way, exact same meaning, exact same answer. You're, you can even see how this is multiplying by the top number and dividing by the bottom. So either way you prefer to write it, feel free to do that. Let's write it out one more time with our fraction notation here for our last number of 20. If I wanted to say 20 is the same thing as 20 over 1, I'm going to multiply that by 3 over 4, and let's see what it gives us. Well, 20 times 3 is going to be 60. 1 times 4 is 4. And then in my final step, 60 divided by 4 gives me 15. Okay, we have another table. Now this time our rule is to multiply by 1 fourth. So multiplying by 1 fourth or taking a fourth of a number is the same thing as dividing by 4. Okay, now if you look at this, remember we said our rule a minute ago. Now, of course, we could write it out. Let's take this top number of four and kind of show you both ways just to make this a little, a little easier to see how it's all the same. If I were to take four and multiply by one fourth, the, the very like official fraction way to do it would be to say my whole number of four is four over one. And then if I'm multiplying by one fourth, Okay, I'm going to multiply straight across the numerator and straight across the denominator. 4 times 1 would give me 4, 1 times 4 would give me 4, and I wind up with 4 over 4, which is the same as just 1, right? 4 divided by 4 gives me 1. Well, remember we said doing it this way is the same as multiplying by the top number, right? Because we multiply across. So in this case, we would say times our top number is 1, and then dividing by the bottom number, right? Since we wind up with that four on the bottom, we have to say divided by four. So you could say times one divided by four. Now in this case, does multiplying by one change anything? No, multiplying by one doesn't change anything. That's why when we had one half, remember we could just divide by two? Well, the same thing is true here. Instead of saying multiply by one and divide by four, since multiplying by one doesn't change our number at all, we can simply say divide by four. Okay, well what is four divided by four? Four divided by four is one. Okay, a fourth of eight, or eight divided by four, would give me two. One fourth of 12, or 12 divided by four, would give me three. And one fourth of 20, or 20 divided by four, would give me five. 